Welcome everyone to the Nerd Nook. I'm your host Evan Teagle with my colleagues, the man who has officially been inside way too long, Noah Bailey. <laughs> Present and accounted for. <laughs> Seriously. So yeah, it is, today it is August 13th. It's been exactly five, five months. Five? Five months since the <sighs> entire world has shut down because of the pandemic. <laughs> That doesn't even sound real hearing I, that. Like, I like what did April happen? Did May happen? <laughs> like <laughs> I know May happened. But like <laughs> honestly, like June and July felt like they happened simultaneously. Yes. <laughs> and now we're just kind of in August and like halfway through it at this point. And it's just kinda of like, oh wow, like school's already starting back again for some of us. And it's like, like well, I know sucks. it was a meme kinda even even as of even as of May, it's like, wow, these months just, these days of quarantine just kind of zoom by, you know? <laughs> like, I wasn't really feeling that until, like, beginning of August. Like, wait, it's it's, it's August. I thought it was, I thought it was July, I thought it was, like, July 10th. Like, no, okay. <laughs> like, right? right? Like, July what? Just, just didn't exist. <laughs> it just flies past. But, I don't know. It's weird because, like, it doesn't, like when you're in the month it doesn't feel like it's going by but then as soon as that month's over you're like I don't remember anything that happened uh -huh. <laughs> like, it's so weird like mm -hmm. honestly July all I remember from July is July 4th weekend and like just waking up to fireworks every 10 minutes and <laughs> like that's pretty much it I had a summer class that I it was online so I don't even remember doing mm -hmm. it and like that's it like I didn't really do anything at all. June for me, especially, I've, I'm having trouble remembering literally anything that happened because usually, you know, E3 happens towards the middle mm -hmm. of that month, and D23 I think also happens either we get or late that month or early, early July, and then Comic Con right after that. So like a lot usually happens in these in these two months, but because it was either all digital or or didn't happen, I'm just I, I don't really have a reference to like. Oh, that's that day. It's like no, I mean one of those days. I think the PlayStation Five event happened. But that could have been back in February. I don't know. Right? Wait. <laughs> for all, for all intents and purposes, that might as well have been half a year ago. <laughs> it's literally like all the same month. It's weird. Uh -huh. Um. So. I think it'd be kind of interesting to just kind of like go over generally what we've been doing to at least try to pass the time and you know not think <laughs> about the things that are going on um has there been any shows that you've either like in your backlog or something you need to finish that you've been watching through over the quarantine i have i i started quarantine with community i think mm -hmm. you might remember yeah, remember saying, talking about yeah, that a little bit. Of, yeah like I was, it's yeah. a show that I've been meaning to watch for a while. But then when, when I saw it was on Netflix, oh, I get to that eventually. And then you said you're watching. It's like okay, now is the time to start. Now is the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, good show. It definitely ran out of gas. Like I, I stopped at season three. Like me and Maria were the right and watching it all. But like the end of season three is a is a finale tier episode. Like it wraps up all of all the main characters, plot points, all the main characters in that one episode, except maybe Anne had like. You know, a pretty significant plot development. Um, it even ended with like the theme, with the extended theme song over the credits. Like mm -hmm. it, it was supposed to be the finale. Like I was, we were fine just ending it there. <laughs> so that that was the right. Yeah, there there is more. Is it worth it? No. So I mean, I went until I think the fifth season, fifth or sixth. I don't. I think it was the fifth season. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I. I should have stopped. Uh -huh. You know, it's like you casually like it's weird because it's like it's like you're it's like you're on a plane, and then as you look around, you're realizing, hey, wasn't there an engine? That, you know, you're kind of slowly <laughs> realizing your uh -huh. plane's about to like characters just kind of don't show up anymore, and then you're like, oh, oh no, and then it's like, well, let's get off. Like but, Chevy Chase's character, oh, what's his name? I I forgot all the names at this point. Oh gosh, um, Pierce. Pierce, Pierce. yeah. He was probably my, probably my least favorite of the group, and I know he leaves in season four, I think, right? Yeah. Like, you know, he, he dies in season four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just know that. Like, 
I was fully ready. Like, if I were to keep watching, I would be full ready for him to leave. But, but like, don't they replace him with with someone else? And like, it's just kind of kind of yeah, not in the same way. Thankfully, because like it's weird because like Chevy apparently Chevy Chase's character is similar to Chevy Chase in real life, which is very obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, but which I never loved that character unless it's in a really funny way, which sometimes it was, but not enough. To he had a couple it, of decent jokes, but like in general, yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah, there's one like there's one, I don't remember what episode it is the one where he's like eating the pizza and he like tries to slap it in his mouth or something. That like made me crack, crack up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, overall, not, definitely not, definitely my least favorite. Mm. But yeah, it was. It's interesting because they did try. It does, they tried to subtly like add characters in and then kind of move characters around. And it's kind of it was weird because like the main character that bothered me is like I love Chang, but they did not know what they were to do with them. Mm. They were just kind of throwing them at stuff. Yeah, and it got to the point where it was just like, okay, this is just dumb. Like, mm. just make him a teacher or like make him a student. Now, like, do so, pick something and go with it. Don't keep like. It's kind of like Tom Cavanaugh with The Flash. They're kind of just th- making up roles and throwing it, and it kind of worked at first. Mm. But, like, after the That's Harrison second... Wells. That's Harrison Wells, right? Right, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. like, you know, it works the first time, and, like, Earth 2, it works. And then, like, after Earth 2, it's kind of like, okay, now, like, this is kind of just annoying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just kind of making up new characters. And it's like, it's like I'm watching, like, a really, like, really cheap improv like you know like obviously you're this character too like okay but mm. not and then but anyway but good show overall I really like it but like when it's good it's really good that show I can't remember any like specific jokes but I remember multiple times especially in season two just literally falling out of my chair laughing like it is yes <laughs> yes and i love the parodies they do mm-hmm. so like movie i mean they've got i mean there's the, the goodfellas episode with the i think it's chicken tenders or something like that yeah. or chicken or something mm-hmm. there's all the all the paintball episodes are great and like it, which, this show is so smart like you know they're able to make I think three different paintball episodes, each having a completely unique and distinct, like, right? you know, era of, like, you know, one was a Star Wars reference, one was a Cowboy reference, one was a zombie reference. Like, yeah. And they're all unique, and each, like, these characters just, just get sucked into those roles so nicely, and it just, and even, yeah. like, outside of those, like, those were probably the best episodes of the show, but mm-hmm. even outside of that, like, Every single joke hits so poignantly, so quickly, yet, like, <laughs> if you're just, like, watching it, you might not necessarily, like, understand the joke, but, like, if if you if you get the jokes or if you understand who these people are, who these characters are, then it's just, oh, they're... Almost every Great. single joke in that show is fantastic. <laughs> I know, and it's so good. And, like, you can tell that, like, this is one of the shows that they enjoy just working on because oh, yeah. they just... They have this really good chemistry. Even, like, early on, you could tell, like, especially with, like, Abed and Troy, like, you could tell they were, like, even, like, in real life, they were probably good friends because, like, their chemistry yeah. was really good together. You believed it. And it just, just worked really well. It's, it's so... It, like, it's a very good, like, ma- band of misfits kind of show because mm. everyone's got their quirks and their issues, but it kind of works when you throw it all together. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite episodes was the one where... It's essential. It was like the second to last episode of season two, I think, and it was essentially, or, or was it the beginning of season two. It was somewhere in season two. It was essentially like the recap episode, but all the stuff that they recapped was stuff that didn't actually happen in the show. It was like completely new scenarios. They just like expect the audience to like, oh yeah, that happened. Like, <laughs> and then like other characters later on in the series like reference epi- reference things that happened in the flashback episode. <laughs> We're just supposed to go with it, okay? Like, this like... apparently happened, okay? <laughs> oh man, and like. <sighs> It's such it's such a smart show. One thing I notice about the show is like the first episode does not prepare you for how the show is gonna go. No. It's very it's 
<clears throat> it's weird because everyone's personality in the first episode is not how I thought it was going to go at all. Mm. Especially Britta specifically. Like, in the first episode, she seemed, like, very, like, sure of herself. And then, like, within, like, two episodes, you're like, this person is a train wreck. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was intentional. I think I have a feeling that you know, Dan Harmon is a maniac. I think he specifically wrote the first episode to be a very generic pilot. And then, which it was still a great episode of the show. Mm-hmm. But like, it was still a pretty, you know, standard pilot. And then as the very next episode, like, they're making random fourth wall jokes. They're making, like, just deconstructing all these characters for no reason. Like, it's just... It's wild. It's wild and great. <laughs> So good, yeah, and oh, and I mean, talk, the dean is the weirdest character. <laughs> I do not, like it's just like you think it's like it's gonna get weird, too weird, but it's always weird. <laughs> like it just mm-hmm. gets, it's such a, he's such a, <laughs> like it's just funny because they'll like be saying something, they'll be like, ooh, Jeffrey Inlay or something, <laughs> it's just like it just throws you off. You're just like, oh my gosh doing like, <laughs> and like it's so it's really funny and just it it's a great show like i think probably my best moment is probably where chang like during in the first paintball episode where chang comes in with like the machine gun uh-huh. paintball just walks in <laughs> and just <laughs> and then he has the like grenade in his uh. jacket <laughs> and then he, Oh, uh, I think that was the best moment ever. Like that was the part where like this isn't a show anymore. This is an experience. Like, mm. <sighs> such a good show. But, oh yeah, like yeah. if if you haven't Absolutely. seen the show, it's all on Netflix. Like go watch it. Like, especially you know since The Office and Parks and Rec are gonna be taken off soon. Like that's I feel like that's yeah. something that can kind of fill that void. Yeah, at least part. Yeah, at least partially. Like it, that's not as long as those shows. At least the good part isn't. Mm. But definitely. Quality wise, I think it's at least could be in the neighborhood. Uh-huh. But man, it's <laughs> show. Sure, yeah, I, I, I never really. Heard, I, it was one of those shows I always heard about but never watched. Mm-hmm. And then my friend from work was just telling me, she's like, "You gotta watch this show. It's great. It's really funny. You gotta watch this show." And I'm like, "Okay, I'll watch it." We just went home for extended spring break. You know, I'll be yeah. coming back next. You know, I was like, yeah, hey, "Maybe we'll do. talk about it when I get back." Yeah, knowing full and not knowing at all, we would never come back. We're but... not coming back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we still haven't gotten to talk about it, which is awful. We were like, dang it, I mm-hmm. not talk about. It. But like, it's but no, it was I full recommend. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was a good call. Yeah. So moving on, moving on to another show that's on Netflix now. You know I love Transformers, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's been brought up before. Um, so, I don't think I've ever actually talked about this specifically on the podcast, but there was a new Transformers show that uh, came to Netflix actually a couple of weeks ago called Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege. <laughs> um, so, wow. <laughs> it's, called, it's called that because, uh, A, there was a video game series called Transformers War for Cybertron back in like 2011, I think. Um, and it's essentially the the Transformers in their OG G1 forms on Cybertron. You know, good guys, bad guys. Like, it's it's great. Um, nice. And there have been spinoff comics from that. There were a, a sequel or two to that game. Like, it's that series was, was great. Um, and especially after those trash movies... It was so good to like actually have some you know good Transformers content to like just sit down and watch. Like there there has been Transformers shows that have you know came out since the movie Transformers Prime was decent. I didn't really get into it as much as other people did, but apparently a lot of people think it was very good. Um, there's been a couple other Transformers shows, but like they seem to be more aimed towards kids. But this one, Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege, which essentially this is the first season in a supposed trilogy of Transformers shows, Mm -hmm. it clearly, to a fault at times, is clearly aimed at adults. Like, it's 
a gritty war tale between the Autobots and Decepticons. Uh, there's there's characters who are like on the fringes who like need to pick sides. Um, Bumblebee of all people is just like a mercenary who goes around and finds and finds and like tries to find Energon for for whoever you know pays him enough. We're and annoying. I feel like maybe I haven't read enough of the comics, but I feel like this is something that Transformers really needs right now. You have the shows that are on Cartoon Network and other stuff like that, which are more aimed towards kids. And then you also have a more, a more grown up yet still wholly Transformers, you know, content that's more for adults. And I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the first time, as far to my knowledge, as far as like a cartoon goes, they actually have the, the Transformers dichotomy be way more nuanced because usually the way it goes is that the Decepticons are evil and the Autobots mm-hmm. are good. The Decepticons just want to conquer Cybertron for nefarious purposes. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yeah, take over the world, etc. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in this show, it's actually like they actually make you try to feel bad for the Decepticons and it kind of almost works. Like essentially all the Decepticons were were people who were like a lower class citizen like people who who uh had to like uh either you know essentially like run gangs for a living or like worked in the mines or like other kind of undesirable jobs with Megatron being Interesting. Megatron specifically being like a war hero in the past but then being relegated to working in the mines if i remember correctly and so he like you know, I got so jaded that he decided these people deserve better. Like the Decepticons, or at least the Transformers who that would then become Decepticons, they deserve better than just, you know, workers who are who are not appreciated. They need to rise up and actually take over this planet. Hmm. And the Autobots are. It's honestly a little vague as to whether or not they were actually the original oppressors. So. It's there's actually a little bit of nuance there of like if you read into it a little bit, it's almost as if Optimus Prime could have at least been instrumental in the in- initial reason why they're rising up in the first place. So oh, like, snap. yeah, it like the oh, like Megatron is clearly a bad guy, and like all the other Decepticons are clearly bad guys. But, but is he though? Exactly. Like that's I've never <laughs> seen that before, and it surprisingly worked. That sounds really awesome. Yeah, like like I said, I love I've loved the Transformers forever, and I love I love a show or movie series, whatever, where there is a clear good guy bad guy. Uh, like the Empire is wholly bad. The the Republic <laughs> is, or the Rebellion is is the good like. Cl- yeah, no clear, confusion. Like, yeah, there's like maybe a couple. Of, you know, he tried to turn Vader at the end, but like. In episode four, the Empire bad, rebellion good. Boom. Um, but and like I love that about Transformers, and they usually like lean so heavily into that with you know Starscream especially just being this conniving little like <laughs> just, just everything he says and does is just like the worst thing possible. But like there's something so like fun and quirky about it, and like and they they definitely did carry that over. Like he definitely does try to try to be a little insubordinate at times and like try to you know uh, try to to sow seeds of doubt into different characters and stuff but in general i just love the fact that there's actually a bit more nuance to it than normal of just good guy bad guy um mm. all the all the transformers designs look as good as they possibly could essentially like essentially they're all they're all like you know, CG renders of how they were in the 80s, which I think is fantastic. Um, They, there clearly is a lot of fan service in there, but it's, I feel like it's done a little differently. I'm not going to go into how exactly that all is, but like, there's no certain characters like Omega Supreme, for example, if you know who that is, (laughs) like shows up in a very cool way. Essentially, he's, he's like this huge, yeah, he's this huge transformer who, 
in this world is essentially one of the guardians who's supposed to protect Cybertron. And okay. early on in this early on in the show, like probably I think this is a six episode series, and like episode two or three, Optimus Prime goes to the Guardians and and pleads for their help. Yeah, they decided to remain neutral, but uh, but Omega Supreme in the final episode came to help in the darkest hour. And like that's I think that's pretty cool. Because in the G one show, Omega Supreme just showed up one day. Like yeah, like that happened a lot in in the original show. Like they made a new toy. It's like okay, he's in the show now. <laughs> Omega Supreme <laughs> is just one of the Transformers now. <laughs> like, but in this show, like he actually had a purpose for being there. Um, right. The show isn't all good though. It does. There are two things in particular that I think really irritate me, and they both kind of come from a from a from a common source. The voice acting is bad. <laughs> it's really? just, the voice acting is bad. Like the guy who plays Optimus Prime is like is the best one. He's not Peter Cullen, the guy who's always played Optimus even in the movies. <laughs> but it's someone who who is almost a perfect voice match. Like if you were just okay. playing him, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And like, there's a couple other Transformers, especially on the Autobot side, who at least sound good, like you know, at least average for for shows of this quality. But then you have Alita One, who is essentially like the second in command after Ultra Magnus uh, decides to to uh, to surrender. But that's a whole different thing. So Alita One is like on screen for at least fifty percent of the show after Episode Two. And it seems like half of her lines needed at least three other takes. Like, they're just not, they're just not, they don't really get the emotion that they want. They're just kind of whiny. She just talked a lot about the same two things. It's like, it's like, do you think it's, okay, sorry, go go ahead. No, keep going, keep going. Okay. That's question. Okay. Do you think it's more like she's repeating the same stuff, like it's, that's the script, or like her is just not delivering in the way it should be? I think it's both, honestly. I think it is just her Alita one specifically wasn't well written. Um, I think she she tried to come off as this, you know, cool, calculating, uh, like you know, general in this army, but. All like she's just kind of whining about how Optimus isn't really making the right decisions a lot. She, she's just like saying like we need like come on we need to protect this we need to do blah 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 we need to blah blah like we need to like every single line starts we need to blah 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 like it just it just got overbearing on top of her de- delivery not being you know the strongest. <laughs> and then on the Decepticon side. Every single Decepticon, even so- they somehow manage this with Soundwave, who ha- who is supposed to have like like a kind of synthesizer, like kind of echoey voice. Mm-hmm. He still has that, but it still has like a, it still has the standard Decepticon like deep grovel to it. Like all of them, just sound evil. <laughs> like every single Decepticon. Every single Decepticon sounds like this. Like, <laughs> deep, grovelly. It's like, or just so you like, know, this is a bad guy. <laughs> or they sound like this, where it's like at a higher pitch, but it's still evil. Yeah. And that's not a huge deal. That's been around since Gen 1, like, especially in the stupid movies. Like, every single Decepticon sounded the same. That's just kind of par for the course with shows like this. Hmm. That becomes a grand issue when one of the Decepticons, whose name was Jetfire, it's always been in every every uh, continuity of the Transformers that Jetfire starts out as a Decepticon. He always turns good by mm-hmm. the end of the show. Right. In Gen 1, Starscream literally built him to be his personal servant, then he turned good. In this show, he was like the head of the Seekers, which are like all the flying robots. Which score a star scream is jealous of him, um, uh, and he, and he sounded like this, like he's clearly a bad guy. Like, stop it! <laughs> we all know you're going to turn good. I'm not looking forward to hearing that juxtaposed with RC and and you know and Optimus and all these other people. It's not going to mix well. No, it, it doesn't. And like in episode five, he turns good. And and yeah, he still talks like that. And like in in season two and three, he's still gonna talk like that. 
like, I don't know, I, I feel like if, then again, it would have been a little weird for there to be just one Decepticon on, on the Decepticon side who didn't sound like that. Mm-hmm. So then, so then it's obvious that he would turn good. So in that case, just have a lot of the other Decept- have like at least three other Decepticons sound normal. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it would be obvious if like you know the one Decepticon has like the regular voice. You're like, well, he's not going to be evil for very long. Exactly. <laughs> also, yeah, it's like, but I see your point. Like maybe they should just make all their voices normal. And I feel like if they all their voices kind of like matched or weren't like super like you know crazy i feel like yeah it would make it would add to the you know moral ambiguity exactly kind of vibe you were talking about earlier yeah. yep but, uh and, and like i don't want i don't want all that negativity to aside like i don't love the show like the the action was pretty good like <clears throat> they actually I, I love when when a show like this, especially one that was originally made for kids and is now being mm-hmm. a little more mature, actually has the have the Transformers actually enact, you know, actual like battle strategies like ambushes and like, you know, like actually killing like every single one of these characters is expendable. Like one of Really? One of the the like head seekers who's usually like second in command to Starscream, whose name is Skywarp, he gets he is off in the third episode. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like like cuz in the show that's this has been a thing since War for Cybertron the the games. Uh the seekers like have kind of commanders and Skywarp was always one of the commanders, but there's a bunch of other like kind of clones or like people who look a lot like the main the main three seekers. Mm-hmm. But they're more like just expendable bots. And Skywarp is the purple one. And it seems like the purple drone is always the one, is always the first to die. So it's like, oh, it's just like a little inside joke between the between the team, like the purple one. It's like the red shirt in Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then, and then like when Jetfire betrays, betrays the Septicons and goes to the Autobot side, like he literally kills Skywarp. Like he shoots Skywarp's head off. Like, <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> and it, and yeah, like they 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 have Starscream literally tell Megatron, Jetfire killed Skywarp. Like we need to go after it. Like it's not. He wasn't a drone. It was Skywarp. I'm like wow, that's that. I know there's a bunch of other. There's still a bunch of other Seekers who can fill a similar role, but like, he's one of the OG bots that you just take him out before the, you know, before. The first season's even over. And there were some Autobots, too, that, like, were either killed off screen or... Like, there's this one shot of just, like, a bunch of Autobots, just, like, on stakes. Just, like, just in, in like, a f- empty field. And, like, a couple of them look... They might... They weren't confirmed, but a couple of them look like OG Transformers, who you haven't seen yet in this show. So it's very possible that, like, these iconic robots just died off screen. <laughs> like... I don't know, that was, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad they're making a legit Transformers show that's like, not, you know, not a thousand percent up to the, like, expectations, but like, you know, voice, because voice acting, especially, you know, when it's not, I mean, I almost said voice acting when it's not real people, that's implied, but you know what I mean, like, <laughs> voice uh, acting is very important, but I mean, a lot of other principal stuff that lately hasn't been fully recognized being recognized mm. is pretty good. And look, the writing sounds really good. Like, moral ambiguity between the trans- <laughs> something I never really thought about with Transformers ever. Oh, yeah. It's, so, like, that's, it's pretty that's really big. And that's, honestly, that's 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 big writing. So I like that. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I kind of wish they had gone even more in that. Like, they didn't really, they didn't really go into nearly as much as they wanted to, probably because is still Transformers and they're still Decepticons. Like they can't, you can't get that one by us. <laughs> but like mm-hmm. just the fact that Megatron <laughs> is actually fighting for a cause and not just, I want to rule the world. Like there's more to it. Like, I really dig that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, your turn. Any show that you want to bring up? Oh, let's see. I got 
Okay, so okay, so we all know like regular show, JG, Quintel, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, they made like he's made a newer show. It's called Close Enough. On it was on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. So obviously, I got the free trial, finished the show, and then got didn't renew it. Right, but right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As we do, but like, <laughs> well, me and my brother watched it, and it's really good. We liked it. It's it's reg it's regular show, the same idea, the same kind of humor, the same kind of jokes, the same. By the end of the episode, stuff gets crazy out of nowhere, mm-hmm. and they have to figure it out and they almost die like every time. But it's awesome. And, like, it's really good. There's obviously a lot more adult jokes because it is, I think, TV 14 or something. So it's a little more adult but it's a really good show. And I thought it was really funny. Yeah. So that's it's a good, good show. Yeah. Isn't the the same guy who voiced Mordecai, who I think is also yeah. the showrunner voicing the main guy in the show? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of the same voice. I think the person for CJ, who, like, Mordecai's, like, other girlfriend, mm. voices the, main, the other main character oh. and, like... They're like this married couple. They have a kid, but they're broke, so they live with another like couple of force. <laughs> and, and it's kind of them just like, kind of just like raising a kid, but also trying to still be young. It's like this interesting like, it's weird because it's like, it's like a few years away probably from like, uh, it's probably probably like ten years away from us. So it's mm-hmm. like okay, I can see some of the things they're talking about because it's like, oh man, like. This is like, oh man, I can't believe I'm growing up. I'm getting so old. But I was like, oh, look at those countertops. Those are so, you know, it's like, it's like <laughs> and it's funny, but it's like, I can kind of see me doing that too. Like, yep. There have been several know. different comedians that, I, that I've that i like watched full specials of where they have jokes about, you know your childhood dies when you walk into a Home Depot and like, I can use a new doorknob. Like, you, your, your childhood's <laughs> over. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Like you start but looking like, for furniture and like and yes. stuff like that. It's like, just... like imagining would this look good in my house? Yeah. Would I, you know, like even though I don't even have a house, but it's like if I had one, would I want this? Like it's stuff like that. Like that's how you know. And like and it's just funny because like they deal with stuff like that, but also like no, I'm still young. I still hang out with the boys. And then like they go to bed like eight thirty. They're like, dang it, how old are we? And like all this stuff. Like it's mm. a. It's a really good show. You know, they have a kid, but they're, like, really irresponsible, so they'll, like, forget her at, like, school or something. Like, it's a re- – I, I highly recommend checking it out if you have the free trial. Just, like, so get it for H- a HBO week. HBO Max, right? Yeah, HBO Max. Get it for a week. I just – we me and my brother binged it in, like, two nights. It mm. was – it was really funny. It's really funny. If you like regular show, you'll love this show. Okay. So, uh, highly recommend I'll probably wait until – the Snyder Cut comes out just to get the HBO Max free trial because I'm not paying for HBO Max in order to watch the Snyder Cut. It's not happening. <laughs> um, or you could just not watch the Snyder Cut. <laughs> I could. I could just not watch the Snyder Cut. That no, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but, like, if I were to get the free trial, that would be why. And then also watch Close Enough. If, yeah. you could fake email. That, you could just that. put... You can make fake email at <laughs> gmail.com <laughs> and just <laughs> use that to... <laughs> Because, mm. like, so I, I want to support stuff like this because I, like, I feel like this type of show is what regular show kind of wanted to be. Like, obviously, yeah. it's a great show, but it has limitations because it was a, a kid's show. And I feel the creator, right. even with, even, like, even regular show got away with some stuff that I was surprised that, <laughs> you know, was on Cartoon Network. Yeah. So, like, I want to support this, you know, what seems to be a passion project for this guy, I just, I just, I don't know. I'm not really sold on HBO Max right now. So, <laughs> no, I, I went on there after watching that and kind of looked, and there was a couple things I liked, but like I most of it, I'm... I know they have yeah. that Elmo show. I know they have. Um... That's oh the new Looney Tunes show, I guess. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have some stuff, but like not enough that I'm like, let me watch this. You know, yeah. like it's it's not worth. It's like it's not. Yeah, I think we talked about this last week, but isn't like double, almost like fifteen dollars or something, or maybe it's more or something, like or something like that. Yeah, something like that. It's like that's not <laughs> worth it. But it's 
Yeah, no, it's not worth it. But it's it's but no, the show is really good. It's mm. and like you said, it is kind of like you know regular show, but with the gloves taken off, so to speak, mm-hmm. so they can actually like make those jokes. Because I mean, like even a regular so show was cra- like they had some really adult jokes. Like yeah. I remember one joke where <laughs> Benson comes out of the shower. And he's like yelling when he comes out, and then his towel drops, and like the little gumball apartment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just look at him like, oh my god! Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> it's like, it's not, but we know what it is. Uh, <laughs> like you can't legally like get in trouble for that, but like y- you know what you were doing. Yeah. Uh, but no, good show though. Good show. Hmm. <laughs> Um, Your turn. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I do want to bring up the fact that, uh, you know, I have Disney Plus, so I might as well, you know, try to watch as much stuff on there as possible because of, you know, the quarantine. I had started watching the X-Men show, like, the X-Men, you know, the 90s X-Men show pretty close to when when, um, uh, Disney Plus came out. And I got like ten episodes in, just kind of fell off of it. And I've been so meaning mm-hmm. to get back to it, but that's just kind of a theme of of this quarantine. Like, there's so much stuff that like I know I need to watch. I know I need to watch like all these different animes, like My Hero Academia season four. I need to watch that because I think season <laughs> five is coming out soon. And like, there are so many, you know, more, like second seasons of shows I need to watch. So many shows I need to start. So many games I need to finish. But Instead, I've just been watching Clone Wars and Gravity Falls <laughs> because those are good shows. <laughs> hey, it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I even put Clone Wars on here because I was in like you know April and May, so I'm like, well, you gotta. Not that we haven't talked about it at all. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, you gotta give credit where it's due, and Gravity Falls, great show. Mm-hmm. Whenever you watch it. Oh yeah, like. I have some major issues with the pacing of the of the second season, but that's not the show's mm. fault. That was Disney's fault no. for for just ruining Alex Hirsch's vision of a clean three season because there's three books. It just makes sense, you know. <laughs> and like, <laughs> even if you're just watching it, you can clearly tell, like, yeah, the second season was going to delve way more into the idea of the society of the blind eye, a lot more into maybe more into different Pacifica's, you know, relationship or what, like whatever that turned out to be like, and then ending with not what he seems. And then season three would, would be entirely the family, you know, living with the fact that Ford is back going on adventures with him. Uh, Cause there was never, there was never an episode b- between that really focused on Mabel and Ford. It was either Dipper and Ford or Stan and Ford there was never anything that like really showed how Mabel would interact with him. And I think that, mm-hmm. that could have been very interesting. Like yeah. you know, maybe Dipper had to do something else. So, her, so he and Mabel went on a mission together. That could have been, that could have been fun. Uh, and, you know, do a lot more with the townsfolk and stuff, but it, like after Ford came back, you had three episodes with him and then a stupid filler episode. And then the finale, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, that's and again, like you said, not I, not the creator's fault. Like that's that's not his fault. He's trying. Like there's only so much you can do. And when Disney runs it, like we're doing this many shows, this many seasons, and like he's just like, all right, let's do what we can't, you know. And that that sucks. But also, I think the show as a whole did wrap up well. It wrapped up as well as it could have given the circumstances. Yeah. yeah. If, I'm sure if he knew that it was going to only be two seasons, he would have kind of, like, cut out a couple episodes of, from season one and kind of pushed mm. stuff, you know, oh, yeah. back and forth. But for, for, for what it is, like, I think yeah, like I think the finale is still very solid, um, I think. Oh, yes. There's a couple of problems with just how they wrapped up, like, you know, Stan losing his memory. I felt that was a little cheap, but, like... It's whatever. It was. It's a kid's show. Like you can't end with one of your characters basically being dead. Like I get it. <laughs> yeah, you have to do something. But yeah. it was. It was still heartfelt. I still felt that. Though. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, yeah. like 
Because it works, but it's also like, oh, that's not cool. One of, but... one of my favorite little, like, little moments that I didn't really understand the first time I watched through it, uh, which I think is something, like, which I think is, is so interesting about, like, binge watching a show, you're able to, like, pick up on things, you know, you know like, pause it and mm-hmm. like, actually examine stuff. Um, at the very, you know, like, a couple, like, couple of minutes right before the show ends, uh, Dipper and Mabel are about are having their birthday party, and Pacifica says, "Come on, open your presents." I've spent a long time wrapping them, and then a little it has like a montage of stuff happening, and it shows Dipper holding a like ghost hunting manual, and Mabel holding a new a new putt putt club. Like those mm. were Pacifica's gifts. Like that just that just. Mm. I, I love that. <laughs> I wish we had expanded right, on the relationship was... with her. We only had like one episode each, but like, still, like, you, they were able to change her enough that she got the meaningful presence. Like, that's 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 yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, and like you know exactly what they're for if you see in the episodes, respectively. Mm-hmm. And like, that's yeah, that's a really good. I like what they did with specific. I feel like they could have done that with her sooner. Yeah, but yeah, I like how they kind of like. I guess she had the kind of mini redemption arc, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, Clone Wars, I've actually watched through the majority of it twice since quarantine, once with my roommate, once with my brother. Uh, it's, it's so good. <laughs> I love it. It is, man. <laughs> like, uh, it just, it's like, it's so good. It's like, there's so many episodes and so many moments where you're like, this is just great. Like, mm. I don't know, like every time there's like about to be a big <laughs> battle, even though I've seen the exact <laughs> battle a bunch of times, I'm like, every time I'm just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Literally <laughs> you know, everything feel like involving Maul and his brother. I, I can't look away. It is so, so good. <laughs> like I've, good. I've it's seen the, the, the Maul Savage versus Sidious fight so many times yet. It's still, I, I love it so much. <laughs> just like how, like for me, it's not even the like, like just how Sidious just shows up. He just mm-hmm. casually walks in, <laughs> chokes these guards all the way to the ceiling. Because yeah. why not? <laughs> and then just like casually, like it's so mm. evil. It's like this, like you. Know. I think I counted six episodes of the entire show that end with Sidious like sitting at his desk and going. <laughs> like there's six episodes that end with him <laughs> doing that. <laughs> yes. Like, how did no one figure out this guy's evil? Like, he's essentially doing the equivalent of like laughing under a flashlight uh-huh. like all the time. <laughs> and no one picks up on this. Uh, oh, man. Man, that finale I've seen it I think four times now. Oof. Man. <laughs> man. Well, yeah, that whole the whole man's lore. And like still even now, like as I say, I I don't know why, but like something about like just land when they're like landing on Mandalore with like the clones there is just like the coolest sequence with Ahsoka just jumping from ship to ship, riding enemy Mandalorians, mm. and then they blow up, <laughs> and then just <sighs> and like the same music from episode three opening yep. playing, and you know that's going on while this is going on. It's like oh. It's just so well written and like so perfect and uh, uh, like I, as I, much I, as I love that song I kind of wish it was the actual song that played during Order 66 but I like this song better so it's fine <laughs> it was yeah, the song that fair. played was an excerpt from Battle of the Heroes but you know what right it's still a fantastic like it's still a fantastic song and it still had the same feeling of forebodingness yeah <laughs> so <laughs> oh, I'll allow it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's good and like sneaks in a Soka's theme a little bit in there also and like it just it builds to this point where it's kinda like, alright, you reach the point where it's like this is like this is it, man. Like everyone's at their fullest. Ahsoka's basically mm-hmm. at Jedi Knight status, like everyone's at their best, everything's going on. You know stuff's going on behind the scenes, but also a ton of stuff is actually mm-hmm. being shown to you, so like Literally, you can't look away. the only thing that would have made it better is if Rebels hadn't ruined that she was still alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like Rebels should have... Like, I know they may, they were on production at different times, but, mm-hmm. like, I feel like if Rebels as a whole had been after this show... Yeah. Yeah, it would have been a lot better. 
but it's but, you, you can't you can't blame the show for that. Like it's just, it the sh- the finale of Clone Wars was already pretty much perfect, but like mm. not knowing that these people actually make that alive would have just made everything just like just that so much because like, there's like potential for these characters to actually die. Like that's like in that, Infinity, yeah. War, like at any point or in game at any point, these people could just be wasted. And like that's it. <laughs> Real, like actually, yeah, and like, especially like, we didn't know, like especially with like Rex and Soka, like that ship's mm-hmm. going down. It's like they could easily just all go down with it, and that would just mm-hmm. be the end. And like you could still have the Darth Vader scene at the end, and all you know, spoilers, BT dubs, but you know, yeah. and like, <laughs> you know, everyone knows, like it's fine. But like you know, you still could have the Darth Vader scene at the end, and all that stuff, like, and that would be, it would still be totally like the same. And then she could have just been dead, and you just wouldn't have known. Mm-hmm. But man, I just. Dude, it's it was so good, man. And like the orders, like when Order sixty six is like happening, and like she's like sensing it, and then you get Rex gets like the message, and it's like the actual like oh Ian McDermott saying it. Yep. <laughs> yes, like I was so like oh my, like this is happening. Like it was like you knew what was going on, but like until they started shooting, it was like this is crazy. Like mm. this, they're like they. Like, I honestly was like, they can't really. They're not really going to, right? Yeah. <laughs> sure <did>. enough, like, <laughs> they, they really did. did. <laughs> and then Mole's whole thing with, like, just ripping the panels of the ship and just oh taking that dude's <laughs> arm with the door. <laughs> That's and, <not> okay. <laughs> oh! Like, there have been some brutal clone moments, because like, I think of, like, the Citadel, where, like, that one guy got, like, chopped in half yep. trying to go up that ship and stuff like that. Like, there have been some brutal clone moments. But, like, I don't know. Something about that one was just, like, oh, just, whew. Mm. Sucks to be clones in the show, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> so, it's a rough life. Yeah. Any other shows that you've been binging recently? That's about it. I've, that 70s show, like, a, that's a classic just show to have on. Yeah. It, I don't know. Have you ever seen that show? I've seen some clips, a couple episodes here and there. Okay. It's, <clears throat> it's a very funny show. It's a good show. Just, like, that's, it's kind of, like, I think it could be kind of like Friends if you have it going. It's long yeah. enough so, like, you could just keep watching it and it would be enough to, like, uh, it'd be long enough that, yeah. it's But it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. I've been watching, uh, what is it called? Whichever channel 117 is on Dish Network, uh, they've been showing a House MD marathon. And, like, I've been watching that show two or three years ago at this point, and I've, I've like, you know, been at home, got nothing better to do, so I've just been watching it if you, if you okay. don't mind a little bit of blood you know some like there's it can get a little gross at times but like in general i think it's a very well written the characters are very good uh like it's essentially it's essentially what if sherlock holmes were a doctor and it's great <laughs> mm-hmm. and also kind of a butthole apparently yeah, <laughs> <from what I've laughs> heard. yeah. I, it's one of those shows that like it it doesn't necessarily get worse as the season goes on. It just kind of gets a little tedious, like because you kind of the point where you know exactly how these characters are gonna are gonna react to certain things. You know exactly how, you know how this storyline is gonna get wrapped up. How this isn't actually gonna change. It's, it it can just be a little tedious, like by season seven and eight. But through then, it's. Even the season eight is still pretty good, but like, I think season one through three, I think even four are, are like are the best of the show. So like, if you just want to watch, mm. you know, the first couple of seasons even, and then you know check it out from there. Recommend. Okay. It. Okay, I'll check that out. I've, my medical show has always been Scrubs, mm. which I don't I know if you've seen that. that. I need to watch that. that. I, 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 I just say this like I always mix it up, but like that is in my top five like favorite shows I've ever uh, seen. <laughs> For sure, that show is hilarious. I love it. Mm. But yeah, if you ever like, if you ever get the chance, highly recommend. Got it. That yeah, show. Had Don't watch too. season nine though. No but, season nine. Okay. <laughs> no eight seasons. There are eight great seasons, and then that's it. So. So it's kind of like The Office. Yeah. <laughs> There's seven Worse. good seasons, and then it keeps going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's. It, I think I don't know. I, I admittedly, I stopped watching the office at that point, so I'm not totally sure. But I don't know. Like this, like, right. like yeah. I loved this show, and the last season was painful. 
Mm. So I just okay. didn't want to cut. So got it. Have there been any movies know. that you but... or like movie series or movies uh, like just in general that you've been watching? Not anything new. I I thought I was gonna like finally get into Harry Potter. I know that guy who hasn't seen Harry Potter, but that's more on my parents than me. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> yep. <laughs> but... But um, I thought that was gonna happen, but of course I don't have the movies. My friends do, but like I can't go to their house really, so it hasn't really worked out. I don't really want to buy myself. I did not. I did not. I think they're. I think HBO Max is also losing the Harry Potter rights. I think they're going somewhere else. I think they're going to Amazon Prime or something. Any idea where? I don't know. Amazon Prime. I think they. That sounds right. I think I my. I think my. Parents have Amazon Prime, so okay. Like, but work. again, it's just so weird. How does Warner? How does the Warner Brothers streaming service not can hold the rights to stream Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's their properties, yeah. right? Like, how does that happen? The Warner Brothers logo, like specifically, every single movie gets darker and darker to the point where at the end is just like, <laughs> it's, it's just like it's like, um, it's like how you know those commercials where it's like. This is your heart. Like this is like your liver. Here's your liver if you drink. Mm. Or here's you know th- those other things. Or here's your lungs <laughs> if you smoke. It's just like by the end of it, it looks like <laughs> it's a it's a it's lungs that smoke you know thirty packs a day for twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like literally like falling apart. Like uh-huh. what is this? <laughs> so yeah, it is definitely a Warner Brothers product. Yeah, they can't keep it on HBO Max for some stupid reason. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how that works. And see, it's stuff like that that, like, Disney Plus is just like, well, sucks to be you guys, doesn't it? Like, you know? But I don't know how... Yeah, they gotta they gotta get their properties because that's really important. Like, especially Harry Potter. Everybody likes Harry Potter, so, yeah. like, or loves Harry Potter. So, like, see, so get on top of that because someone else has that. The, the show, like, the, the movie series, it's pretty good. Pretty solid. Hmm. Um, is there a show of any kind for Harry no, Potter? No, I don't think so. Um, which is actually kind of surprising, okay. but yeah, there's not no like anthology show, no like you know before Harry's time show. There's some games that kind of explore that territory, but not really, not no like visual. Yeah, is it like show or movie I think is it was a magical beast or something Fantastic like that? Beast is that where I find them is bad. Don't bother. Yeah, there it is. Don't bother. <laughs> No bother. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what I heard. But I still like. I thought mm-hmm. I heard it was kind of yep. connected. The second, the second again, Fantastic I don't know Beast movie is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I don't have time to go into it. <laughs> it's just, it's very bad. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. Fair enough. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Three hours in, and another thing, man. I just can't believe that you would ruin. This. Uh, but. Um, now, I need to get all my movies. Um, in general, though, I don't really, I don't, I don't really watched a lot of movies. I know me, I kind of just watched Star Wars a few times with my mm-hmm. brother, and we're kind of like, hmm. Like my brother, it's funny because like my brother hasn't seen the prequels in a long time. Mm-hmm. He's like, Nah, man, these were good. And I was like, Which part? And he was like, Yeah, that was, that was cool. And I was like, I feel like you should watch the movie again. And like, cause he re- the way he remembered episode one is he didn't think he didn't remember how much how in the movie Jar Jar was, uh, and you know he was like he thought Jar Jar was just around for like fifteen minutes. Like man, people give all this crap to Jar. I'm like no, I'm like he's kind of in it a lot. He's like he's not in it that much. I'm like most of the movie. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I'm like he's, he's like kind of like of that movie. <laughs> yeah. He, I think he has like the but like. Probably like top three most lines in the movie, <laughs> probably, and that's like and my brother's like no nah, no nah, nah. and I'm just like let's watch it and we got like an hour and a half in on Disney Plus and he was like so Jar Jar's just kind of hanging around huh and I was like yeah <laughs> we're still here <laughs> it's funny he was like yeah this isn't really that great I'm like you're realizing what you know everyone else is kind of saying and like it's kind of funny because it's like. Like at high, like you know, because I've been there. Like your hindsight, you think something's better than you mm. remember, and then you go back and you're like, "Oh, oh, yeah, okay." I wish it worked oh. as well the other way around. Like there are very few yeah. properties or whatever where I don't like it, and then I watch it again, I do like it. That's happened very yeah, few I, times. 
There have been times when I think something's bad, I go back to watch it, and I enjoy it more because it's bad. But I don't think it's. I don't, you know, think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything that I have not enjoyed, and then I came back seen and then really Aquaman enjoyed. Aquaman a second time, but I have a feeling maybe Aquaman. Okay, I think I. I don't know because. When I think about Aquaman, I just think about that desert scene and how slow that oh, guy was. Oh, and there was that one stupid scene where during the climax, you know, literally every single fish in the entire ocean is fighting each other, yet they have time to make out for a whole 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 45 hey. seconds of movie time was taken out of hey. them. <laughs> I mean, in his def- like, in their defense, they could die, like, even though they're the main characters, but they don't know that, so, like, <laughs> I guess, like, they don't know how much plot armor they mm-hmm. have, so, like, they thought, oh, yeah. well, maybe I'll die, but I agree, like, like but still, yeah, I mean, I mean, there probably are some cooler parts in there that, like, if you just kind of ignore the slower parts, maybe it's actually enjoyable, like, I remember the- some of the fights are actually pretty cool, like, I remember the, 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 like final fight between Arthur and Orin is actually pretty good. Um, even the initial one is not bad. So yeah, maybe if I watch it again, I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I think I would. If there, I think I would watch that again. I think I would. Mm. It. I have my phone out though. <laughs> like, yes. yes that's, you know, it's yeah. kind of like I'd watch it, but I wouldn't like only watch it. Nothing. I'd have to like have something going on. Mm. But. Yeah, it'll be okay. Yeah. I'm trying to, what else did I just like? I'm trying to think of something I've just not liked, and then like, well, usually I don't come back to things I don't like. Exactly. I guess I don't yeah. know, but like, because I don't. I'm trying to think of movies I just hated, and then like trying to think if I was just I'm mean trying to think of like it, classically or... bad movies because like, for some reason, people don't like Age of Ultron or Guardians Galaxy Two. I love both really? those movies. So, yeah, I thought those were really good. Yeah, Captain Marvel's fine. Uh, Ant Man's fine. Um, Thor two is still bad, but like enjoyably, yeah. bad. kind of enjoyably bad. Not as much as even the first one, but like it's it's whatever. Yeah, the first um, one's kind of just nah. the most kind of there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean the second one's like okay, I've seen enough. But like <laughs> the first one, like I might get through it. The second one, I'm changing the channel. Yeah. <laughs> like. But it, I'm trying to think what else because like yeah usually yeah it's the other way around it's like I like something and then over time or I'll get older and realize oh, that maybe wasn't too great but yeah mm-hmm. it's, I'm trying there's got to be something that I like I don't know no I don't know maybe maybe that could be like the new quarantine test like find something that you don't like and then see if you like yeah. it if you want yeah. it. That actually, that actually is a good idea. I don't know. I'm idea, trying to yeah. think of things I don't like. Oh. <laughs> Watch the Rise of Skywalker again. <laughs> I, well, but you bring that up because my roommate and I, we, I think, I think this wasn't either late May, early June. Yeah, I think it was the weekend. Actually, yeah, it was the weekend after after Star Wars Day. Um, we decided to to binge watch the original Star Wars trilogy, like all three back to back to back. It was great. <laughs> All three of the movies hold up perfectly. Like, there's still some stuff in Episode Six that's kind of like the maybe the Ewoks are a little too much at times, but like it's maybe a little goofy at times. But like, it's still a fantastic movie. Mm. You know, Episode Five is phenomenal, obviously. Even Episode Four, I remember Episode Four is kind of in my head as like the boring one, but it's still good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I remember, the last time I saw it, I kind of remember it as, like, the one, that, it kind of takes a while to get the ball rolling, but once it gets rolling, it gets yeah. good. But, it like, until, like, they find Han Solo, it's kind of But you still, dull. I still love all the characters, even when it was just droid stuff for half an hour, I still liked how the droids mm-hmm. interacted with stuff, like, I, I don't know, I just, <laughs> it was honestly... It was really fun just watching all three back to back to back, actually seeing a coherent story yeah. play out before my eyes. You know, all three, you know, learning from the previous one and being like, oh, here's what works. 
let's just do that again. <coughs> or here's what maybe could be done. Because Empire Strikes Back just, you know, starts, you know, it just, you know, starts and then just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. And then about a month and a half later, in like end of June, I convinced my roommate to to binge watch the sequel trilogy. <laughs> um, yeah, The Force Awakens is the worst movie now that Ryan Skywalker is out. Wait, what? The Force Awakens is a worse movie when it's informed by the fact that Rise of Skywalker is out. Oh, okay. Like, I thought you said the worst movie. No, I was no, like, I don't know about a, that. It's a, worse <laughs> it's a worse movie now that Rise of Skywalker okay. is out. There's a certain things in that that were clearly hinting at things that didn't show up even in mm. Abrams' movie. There were certain, like, the fact that Rey was able to best Kylo Ren in a fight in the first movie meant mm. that the stakes were super low for the rest of the series. Like, it just, you didn't really care when they're fighting in the in the last one because, like, yeah, they both had some training since then, but, like, why should it matter when Rey is a complete noob? Yes, she was able to beat him, even though she he was trained by Luke Skywalker at least a little bit. Like, she should have yeah, at least not been a tie. Any... It should have at least been a tie, but no, she won somehow. And like I wasn't mad about that. I didn't care until Rise of Skywalker came out, <laughs> and it's like, okay, she lost that time, but like, why didn't she? I, whatever. <laughs> How did? Yeah, what, yeah. I mean, like, I know like the Force, but like, yeah, she should have got wrecked. Like, there's no. <laughs> yeah. Never held a lightsaber before beats a you know supposed Sith Lord or yeah. whatever. Like, I don't even. I, want, I don't not. want Kylo Ren to beat her necessarily. I I would have preferred it. You know the the planet was crumbling around them. Just like have the have the Earth you know split them apart and it's indecisive battle. That would have been fine. But nope. Whatever. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would have. I don't. Know, I like yeah, if he had to like beat her. Like you didn't have to like destroy her. But like if it was like, pretty established like you were not gonna beat him mm. like you know because i feel like that keeps the overarching tone kind of you yeah. know so so yeah i i didn't end up loving force awakens even though i did like it before episode nine comes out episode eight is a phenomenal still a phenomenal movie i will die on that hill and it's even better <laughs> now, it's even better now that ryan skywalker came out <laughs> wait how is it better That's, because i i need to hear that the, i think the idea that like that someone messed up what this movie set up so horrendously makes the fact that like you can plan out what you would have wanted to happen after you know the lightsaber broke after Kylo Ren became the new supreme leader etc cetera, etc cetera. like you know all these new things that episode 8 set up you can make up your own episode 9 i feel is actually more engaging than watching episode nine. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it up into interpretation. And, yes. and, <laughs> and like, I loved yeah. episode eight, you know, like I said, there's a couple of things here and there that I don't, I don't love through and through, but like on this most recent rewatch, the Canto by itself is only about 11 minutes. Like it's not really that long. It's not that much of the movie. Uh, all the stuff with Luke makes perfect sense. Um, like Ray actually has a character in this one. Kylo Ren actually has a character. Like all these char- all these characters actually I feel right. they're they're the best they're ever going to be because you know we're not going to get any more of them. And I just feel like it is just a very well done story that actually does take from the first one. Doesn't retcon or at least nearly as much as the people think. It's not retcon. It's just the story progressing Snoke dying isn't retconning it's just no that's, that's not how retcon works, works. Like, yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> and like yeah, Luke like... Liter- I love the line so much like you know Ray is <laughs> talking to him and he's like you're Luke Skywalker you can you know you can go and stop this right now and Luke is like what did you expect me to just face just turn on my laser sword and face down the entire first order That I can't do that and it's like <laughs> I feel like that was Ryan Johnson through Mark Hamill talking to the audience, like when when J.J. Abrams had Ray handing Luke the lightsaber at the end of his movie, what did you think would happen? What did you expect this movie to be? Did you really expect it to be Luke being like, "Oh, I've I've decided to shut myself off for fifteen years 
that's my lightsaber. Okay, let's go. No, it's not happening. Like that yeah. makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah. It's like when he says, like, yeah, I didn't you think I went to the most unfindable planet in the galaxy or something like that? <laughs> like you know, like he's got a point. You don't just go to exile to be found. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of exile for a reason. So so yeah, like it was still fun kind of watching through all three of those back to back to back, but Episode nine is still just, it's a, I, I love watching Batman v Superman because it is so bad. Like <laughs> every single decision made in that movie is just incorrect. Yet for some reason, <laughs> even though it's the same writer making episode nine, I just can't have that same sense of enjoyment. Like I probably love Bat, I probably like Batman and Star Wars about equally, honestly. Maybe Star Wars even a little more. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have I to, like, like, do that. a lot of calculation in order to weigh that, but, like... I it, think I like Batman more than Star Wars. I like them about the same. Yeah. So, theoretically, it should be a similar experience, yet, for some reason, Episode Nine is just not fun to watch. <laughs> I think it's because you were expecting something great. Or maybe you just because you would, like... Or maybe it's, like, because of how it was set up just to, like, completely, like... Yeah, it feels like a retraction... Yeah, but it's the finale, and it's mm. like that. How did? You, why did? Would you do that? Yeah. Versus DBS just is like incorrectly done. Like it's progressing, but it's just progressing incorrectly. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, I also watched through a bit of like uh, I did at least a mini Marvel movie marathon. Not all of them, but like. Essentially, when we did that uh, MCU, like, ideal order mm-hmm. list, I essentially watched through all of those. Um, and, yeah, it just, it, it's a good, it, it's a good series. <laughs> <laughs> the movies I, are pretty I good. I don't think that's a surprise. Like, you didn't even say it. Marvel, Marvel movies are good. <laughs> Most of them, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. What about video games? What games have you been into? Okay. So, lately... I've been playing, like, all the, like, remaster... Like, this whole, like, thing, all, like, the remastered to brought the PS4 games and mm-hmm. classic games I used to play. Like, there was the Spyro trilogy that first, like, I first got, like, back in, like, April. Yeah. Which, like, me and my brother played Spyro back since, like, 2000-something. Right. Like, you know, like, we've been playing those games forever. So, of course, when it comes out on PS4, you gotta get it. And then you get the Crash trilogy also, because... Why not? Yeah. And then they get Crash Team Racing, and then you, you got to complete the set. <laughs> but other than that, I've, other than that, I've got Jedi Fallen Order. I got a few months ago, which that's been really good. And I got it was <laughs> my friend wanted to borrow it, so I just got him one for his birthday <laughs> cool. instead. And then it's like that game's been really good. I was like, it's not. It's interesting because it's like I'm a very like like. I like this or I don't like this kind of person with video games. I'm not like a, I like this genre. And I'm kind of like that in general with like music or anything. It's like, Mm -hmm. I either like this song or I don't. It's not like I like this kind of music. Yeah. But like with video games, it's like I either like this game or I don't. And it's weird because like Jedi Fallen Order is very like Dark Mm Souls-ish to the point where like, you know, they have unblockable moves, all that stuff. And like that isn't my kind of game normally. But because it's Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> I accept it. Uh-huh. Kind of like how, like, I'm not, I don't think I'd really like, I, I haven't played Assassin's Creed. I think I'd be okay with it. But then I play Batman Arkham <laughs> because it's Batman. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. it, you know, and obviously I don't kill anyone, but it's kind of, it has similar elements, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So it's the kind of interesting. Be, yeah, <laughs> and so it's interesting. Like, my brother pointed it out to me. He was like, now, how do you like this game, but you don't like that game? It's, just, it's like, well, it's not that I don't like it. Just it's it, just the it, it vibes are different. I think that's mostly yeah. Just the vibes are just yeah. like, you just like because I don't love first person shooters at all. Like I'm not good at them. But Doom Eternal was like the first major game I played over the quarantine. It, I just love that. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't play like other first person shooters, but just. The way Doom Guy moves, just the way he interacts with the environment, the way, just, just how satisfying it is to kill demons. Like it's just, that game is just fun to play. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, and like, yeah, like you said, like the vibe, just how you feel playing the game, and that's all of it. And like, you know, and like, it's just like you know, any superhero game, I usually like feeling because I like you know, you know, the theme now is become you know Batman, become yeah. Spider Man, become whoever you're playing it. You know, maybe it'll be the Avengers in a few. Like, I don't know if that's. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling it. I don't know. I think it's like, is it, has it come out yet? It's or like people next, are playing it or month. something? The the beta like, like, happened last weekend, but it's coming okay. out. Coming that, out that's what I've been seeing. Cause, like I've been seeing it like on YouTube and stuff. And I'm like, oh wow, this is happening. But mm-hmm. like, again, not crazy about it, but I want to at least see it. So like maybe I'll like, you know, might get into it. Maybe not. I think they kind of missed the boat on the Avengers hype, but yeah. I mean, eh. It's not like the Avengers aren't popular, so... <laughs> But, yeah, I just, I mean, it's kind of just, it's weird. It's like, I like, you know, I, I got Spongebob, you know, re, you know, you're noticing a trend here, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Like, yeah, Spongebob Bob remake, remake which I, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't actually finished it. I got, like, I got, like, 70 of the 100, like, mm-hmm. golden spatulas, which is, like, the right. token, like, objectives and like, the first, like, week. And I just kind of put the game down because I didn't want to finish it, and then I just didn't pick it up for like two weeks. <laughs> uh-huh. And it's kind of like you know, cause like I don't want to rush through this game, but I kind of already did, so it's like crap. And yeah. I'm like, well, I need to finish it. Like you gotta finish. You're like you know, it's like when you have milk in the fridge, but it's like maybe enough for one glass, but you just don't want to be that guy to <laughs> yeah. finish it. It's like just exactly. just come on, just just do it. Like it's fine. You'll get more. Like so that's kind of where I've been at lately. Game. It's been a fun time. It's weird because like. I'm starting to go to the game stores now, and it's like, okay, the same games are still there, and I kind of just, like, there's not anything new really popping up right now, so I'm kind of just like, oh, uh, and I'm a little worried I'm running to it, which, to, I've got to the point where I'm starting to, like, buy games off the PlayStation Store, which, if you know me, <laughs> I never buy a game if it's not the physical copy, uh-huh. ever. Because I know so I'm gonna forget my password, <laughs> or something's gonna get hacked, or something. Uh, because yeah, that's play, my luck. PlayStation gets hacked constantly, so that's not. I <laughs> know, and I was like, no, let me get the physical game. But this game was not. There's no. There's the Yu-Gi-Oh game, right? Which, I mean, you know me, I love me some Yu-Gi-Oh. I, I don't know why, because I wasn't allowed to watch that show either. <laughs> but my brother bought some cards one day, and since then I got hooked. Yeah. Right. And then I get I got it on because it's only on the PlayStation Store. It's online. I'm like, okay, I might try it out. And then I got hooked. So, mm-hmm. and that's where I'm at right now. I'm just kind of playing whatever. Yeah, in my nice. But yeah, it's it's a good time. Me, me and my brother were still on the hunt for a Switch. They've been around, but we've been we found one, but it was kind of like like. You know, it's like you hesitate, and then as soon as you hesitate, it's gone. It's like, yep. oh, we should have bought that. Are you looking for the? I assume you're looking for like the, the like Switch Prime and not the Switch Lite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the Switch Lite. No, the yeah, because that's like just the handheld, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's still can yeah, play all no. the same games and stuff, but it's like you wouldn't really be able to play multiplayer as much. You wouldn't really right there's certain things that you'd want to have the. The switch right, the which that's you know, but it's like <laughs> if I get a switch, I mean that's like three hundred. Then you know I gotta probably get at least one good controller. Yeah, and then you gotta get games, and they're all like fifty, and like so you're up to like you know five hundred million dollars. And it's yeah. like, you know that is kind of a lot. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll make that back. But like, yeah, but uh, my brother's convinced though. But he just bought a PS4, even though I have one. And I was like. Why? How'd you just okay. pay a PS4 when the PS5 is coming out this holiday? <laughs> well, see, I hear that, but also, like, PS5 is going to, one is probably going to be crazy, because they still haven't announced the price. I it's going to be at least 500 though. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> the, 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 the all digital one could be 350 You don't know. <laughs> but it's all digital, so who cares? <laughs> exactly. And, like, all, most of all my games but one are physical anyway, so that's not even going to work. So he's even bought physical games, too, for my PlayStation, yeah. so it's like, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and honestly, I I don't. I'm not really like I don't. I'm not even like I, I've never been a guy to like really like want the newest console. Like I want new games, but like I'm never like oh I gotta get a PS5. Like I'll get it when like I have to. Yeah, you know it's like getting it at launch just doesn't feel right. Like, I don't need to be the first person to have one because like 
they're going to make a bunch of new versions of it anyway. There's going to be the PS5 Pro and the PS5 Slim, Slim or yeah. whatever. Like yeah, that's, That system the, needs a Slim. It is too big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they need a Slim and needs like a, needs a like Nutra. What is it? <laughs> it needs a lot. It needs the Weight Watchers. Uh, it needs a lot of that. So it, it's a big one. It's a big yeah. one. That's for sure. That's, that's one of but, the like kind of minor problems with being a Nintendo fan because once the new system comes out, no games come to the previous system. Like, once the the Switch came out, no games came to the Wii U. Once the Wii U came out, no games came to the Wii, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Oh. So, and, like, the Wii U could play Wii games, but the Switch can't play Wii U. The Switch can't play Wii U games, although a lot of the Wii U games are being ported to the Switch, so I guess that's something. Um, so, like, I can't really... So, in order to play anything, I need to get the new one, which, like, I... It's mm. a good business model. I get it, but, like... I don't know, it, it's still, Ouch. it's it's interesting seeing, a, there's actually quite a few PS4 games that are being announced, uh, mm -hmm. like they've been announced over the past couple of weeks that are coming out early next year, even after the PS5 has been out for a couple of months, so like that's, uh, I know they'll be able to play on the PS5, but that's still interesting how they're PS4 yeah, games. And I, yeah. yeah, and I mean... Assuming quarantine's gonna be going <laughs> strong when the PS5 drops, it's gonna sell a lot. Oh yeah, it's but I feel like already, but because quarantine apparently just you know bumps everything yeah. up like crazy. Oh yeah, like it's gonna be huge, and mm. you know, and that's fine because you know, good for them. But yeah, if they do start making it like PS5 only, which they used to do that a lot for PlayStation, but like recently they kind of chilled out. Yeah, but, I have like, a feeling they will. Like I remember, so like, got what, really cocky this gen. I have a feeling. Every first party game is going to be PS5 only from now on. Yeah, which not too excited, but I mean, I bought my PS4. I didn't think about it, but it has been like four year or twenty six, seven, sixteen, like sixteen or seventeen. It's been a while, yeah. so yeah, I've I've had my PS5 for a while, PS4 for a while, so mm -hmm. it's been like four years, I think. So it makes sense that yeah. it's about time, but <laughs> I mean. It, it's it's very interesting what how the different gaming companies their strategies seem to be you know like Microsoft originally their big holiday game was going to be Halo Infinite like that was the thing along with the Xbox Games Pass and having backwards compatibility with every other system which mm -hmm. is fantastic but Halo Infinite so was like the one first party game that was going to be the system seller but that recently got delayed oof but the Xbox Series X is still coming out this November, even though Halo Infinite got delayed into next year. I'm really curious how that's gonna, how that's gonna go for them. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason to because I mean they still have that full backwards compatibility. It's like I can play every Xbox game I ever yeah. made, and then there there aren't any new ones that I can't play. So I like, get the new system. Yeah, like. That is, that is very enticing, and then Xbox Games Pass having almost every single like major third-party release, every single first-party release, a bunch of legacy titles on there for mm -hmm. you know, free for 15 bucks. Like, I think there's a bundle to get Xbox Xbox Live Gold and and uh, Game Pass for 15. Like that's fantastic. Why is a PlayStation? PlayStation. I don't have something like that. Thing of PlayStation have, Now or something yes, like now, that. Now, yeah, it's it's fine. It's kind of laggy though because you're streaming them as opposed to Xbox. Oh, so yeah. it is super laggy. Yeah. Like I have, like I was trying to play just anything. I there's a Sly Cooper game on there. Right. I was playing. It was so bad. Mm, like, like you press a button and like a second later they jump and then yep. Yeah. Sly like, like Sly For Cooper the, just can't have that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I need like you need like really good timing for stuff mm. like that, and then it's or like it'll like you'll hear your character like still moving and jumping, but the screen will just be still there, and you're just like, yeah, come on, man. Yeah, like, don't. Yeah, like PS4 or sorry, PS5 is only gonna have PS4 backwards compatibility, and then PS Now you're gonna be able to stream some other stuff. But yeah, that's I don't know. It's gonna be interesting to see which which model wins out. Like. Xbox will have more games, but PS5 will launch with Miles Morales, so I think that'll be very enticing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think because they're... I think PS5 is going to have a way stronger launch, and I think that's going to be enough. Yeah. Because, yeah, 
Oh, that's yeah, Microsoft that can, can make theirs cheaper. Like, if theirs is going to be 400 and PS5 is 5, like... That that's could... true. But... Don't... Isn't it like... Didn't that Avengers game... Don't they get Spider-Man only it, just yeah, for PlayStation it, now? Yeah. Isn't that a thing? <laughs> it's just so messed up. <laughs> like, Xbox is just... Like, that's the second time spider Man's just like... <laughs> Screwed over Xbox because I mean they have the right, so they can. But yeah. <laughs> but it's I don't know. Like, it. It, it just uh, it, yeah, it's, it's it feels a little dirty it's to me. I'm not gonna bit. lie. <laughs> Wait, but then again, eh, yeah. I don't know. But especially will it help the game when, enough? We'll especially see. hurts when Microsoft isn't gonna have any other major first party games at launch. So right, not even having Spider Man on Avengers. On your Xbox is yeah that's that's a that's, that's a blow yeah that's messed up <laughs> but yeah that's why I don't get Xbox <laughs> it's not the only reason. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. no you're not wrong you're not yeah. wrong <laughs> no, no, no. I mean I, I'll admit I think Xbox used to be better mm. like Xbox 360 I think like was better than PS3 oh yeah the controller alone was enough for me to want want one of those yeah. But, like, yeah, PlayStation 4 stepped up as game. And, like, I know, like, everyone says this, but, like, batteries is a thing. Like, yeah. Having, like, I, I, I've i been playing my old Game Boy a lot over quarantine, and, like, the frustration of running out of batteries and not having more <laughs> in the drawer is unreal. Uh-huh. Like, I know I can just go to the dollar store or wherever and just get more, but, like, you just don't want to get out of it. You're just like, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. I'm out of batteries. Like, yeah. That, like if I'm doing that with a controller, I'm just like that can't like I don't know. But <clears throat> yeah, but now PS five probably will not be I will not get one for like probably years at least. Yeah. I mean yeah, I, I, I I've pretty much only ever gotten Nintendo stuff. Like I appreciate yeah. the other the other systems and other gaming stuff. Like I've only ever really bought Nintendo stuff, so I'm not buying another no. system for probably at least no, another I, three or four years. No, and I mean, Nintendo's, I mean, honestly, Nintendo's killing it. Like, let's not, let's not, like, we're not, let's not play around here. I mean, they have, we're talking about Animal Crossing last week, just, mm-hmm. you know, casually putting up 20 million. <laughs> In four months, yep. Like, you know, like, yeah, but like, and, you know, it's like, you know, there are a lot of people who are like, you know, maybe I'll get a Switch when I already have a PS4, but no one with a Switch is like, let me get a PS4. It's like, I got my Switch, I'm good. Like, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, speaking mm-hmm. of Switch, I have this horrible habit of buying games and never finishing them. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just something that me, both me and my brother struggle with. Um, I have this huge <laughs> backlog. I need to finish this game called Astral Chain. I need to finish Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I need to finish Damon X Machina. It's a game where you can play as a giant robot. Like, I want that. Like, I... <laughs> but, like... <laughs> I just... That's so you! I know. But I just... I don't know. Like, especially with Damon X Machina, I got to one level where... This game would have been pretty easy up to this point. I failed once, and it's like... I don't want to play this anymore. I just stopped playing after I finished that one time. I, I don't know. It just wasn't... Like, I, tr- I think I tried it a couple other times and then, like, periodically, and I just couldn't get past it. I'm just like, I don't need... I, I just stopped playing. Astral Chain, I just... I didn't get bored of it. I just stopped playing. I don't know why. Ultimate Alliance 3, there's... Oh, the hell. You go to hell. Like, it is the worst level in the game. <laughs> like, not even... You don't even... I haven't even gone to hell yet. But, like... I haven't gotten to the final boss and just like there's just one gauntlet where there's just so many enemies and you just can't there's no healing spot and you just can't you can't do it. <laughs> I just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have been playing my staples of a lot of Smash obviously and a lot of yeah. Pokemon obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the essentials. Yeah. <laughs> and like you know what I'm content with that. Like, I, I should be playing these other games that I need to finish. But if I'm, as long as I'm enjoying, you know, just running around that open world, you know, the DLC and Pokemon, just catching whatever, you know, just grinding. Like it's 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 fun. So who cares? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, and like that's the same thing. It's like 
whether it's a newer game or a game you already put a hundred plus hours into, as long as you're having fun, like, yeah. mm. right? Like, because my brother has that habit too. He'll he's the guy who he'll get to the last level of a game, like a long game, mm. and then just not finish it. And I'm like, dude, you're a hundred hours in. Yeah. Just go beat the final <laughs> boss. Like, uh-huh. Come on. I don't want. I don't want to finish it. It's a it. thing like, everyone has. <laughs> Like we all, we've all been there, you know. Mm. It's just like, yeah, you know, like that last bit of effort. You're just like, ah. I mean, I, I basically beat it. It's over. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, ah. is it though? Like, but I get it. Yeah, it's. I love it. I love video games. Oh yeah, it's so like, great. I... Yeah. Like, can you imagine like this imagine quarantine like ten years ago or like without. You, like I mean, <sighs> ten years ago we it was only twenty ten, so we still okay. That is games. true. Never mind. <laughs> but like, the, the I guess like, but even then, twenty. But even twenty ten, I mean, there's no Netflix. There's no, you know, we still like commercials. Well, even like, the, yeah, I feel, feel like back then I was content with just like I was. Yeah, I didn't really watch a lot of YouTube back then. I think that was, like, right before I started really getting into YouTube. I just played, like, I would have spent this entire time just grinding in Pokemon Heart Gold. Like, I would have just been doing basically the same thing, just minus the YouTube and streaming stuff part. Like, I probably would have gone outside and just played more, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Kind of undervalued just going outside. It's just... Yeah, it's just... I don't know, like, recently, like, my parents have been trying to get us to watch more, like, actual TV with them, which is <laughs> torture because there's commercials. Uh, like House and Me. And like, like, I know you're showing, like, I know, I get it. It's still syndication, so, like, you gotta still show commercials, but, like, I binge watched The way I used to binge watch House, they're hour-long episodes, but on, you know, when, if you find them on the internet, they're only, like, 40, 45-minute epi- episodes. Mm-hmm. I was able to, to watch, like, three episodes a day and not get tired. I could watch three episodes of house but like i feel like most of my day is gone because i just sat in front of a tv <laughs> and having to watch all those commercials having to like it it's effort right? to watch tv with commercials on <laughs> and that it didn't is. used to happen <laughs> it is it's like you're like and it's weird because like you're so trained now that you don't need commercials or like it's a five second ad you can skip mm-hmm. or something and then it's like now it's like and all, I think commercials have gotten more obnoxious because, like, yeah. there used to not be like ten to twelve commercials for every break. Especially I'm during, like, especially now that we're in a you know election year, every literally every mm-hmm. other commercial. We were watching Jeopardy the other day. The entire commercial break was six political ads right in a row. It's like I get it. You need to, to showcase good and bad stuff about different candidates, but every single commercial, why? <laughs> Seriously. And it's like, guys, like, I, I hear you, but good gracious, we get it. Like, mm. oh, man, like, it's, and it doesn't help that they're all, like, super annoying and, like, super, like, just like, I don't, I just want to get back to my show. <laughs> I'm not trying to, like, come on, man, we're having a good day. <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of Jeopardy, like, it, it has been fun watching They've been doing a lot of reruns, like opening of the Jeopardy vault and showing the first couple of weeks they were showing episodes from the first like first season of Jeopardy. That was a trip watching. Mm. Like you've, you've seen Jeopardy, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. We used to watch. We watch it all the time. Yeah. Like watching like the first like literally, just like things were so much slower. Like the clues on the screen were like on like literal each individual like screen. They had to like the camera oh, literally what? had to pan down. It wasn't like audit but the. The, the clue didn't like pop up on the screen. The camera literally had to swing into it. Um, oh, that's so just crazy. Alex, Alex <laughs> back looks so much different. The set looks so much different. Um, and yeah, like they kind of have like colored hair and everything. I like, think it was like kind of like it was at least darker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and yeah, like they've been showing, and then for like the last month, they've been showing specific episode that showcase people. That would then show up in the Tournament of Champions 2005, mm. I think. And yeah, like that's been the last two weeks of just the Tournament of Champions. That's like, a great. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah, yeah like, like watching all these, all these people that you just saw in their heyday come back, and like some of them do terribly because the other two were just so good. Even though this right? person 
had a five win streak. They just couldn't out. They just couldn't beat these other two people. I'm like, <laughs> man. But yeah, I remember seeing like I remember once there was one tournament of champions. There was a guy who he would always pick the two thousand, the one thousand, two thousand mm-hmm. questions first. Yeah. And like systematically like make it so they couldn't catch up to him. And it was yeah. like this guy's such a savage. <laughs> like, oh man. But yeah, that's. Yeah. that's been a lot of fun like that's just, that's something that's fun to just sit down with the whole family and just you know watch for half an hour <laughs> yeah, like, you at least feel like you learned something <laughs> right no, my family that's family feud we mm. love I love right. that show like we always and it's funny because it will be like no it's obviously this I, no, that is not going to be up you know we're like arguing <laughs> each other and then it's up there and it's like yeah. what I say like, <laughs> like okay then like mm. and it's 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 really funny. Like Steve Harvey's a great host. And, like, yeah. It's I, see, and like any more of that. Like I, I, I'm pretty sure we have like the game show channel or game show network or whatever it's called. But yeah, like we just never put it on. Yeah, we just never put it on more. I feel like we should because like I feel like that would bring everyone in a good mood for a couple of days. I think. Yeah. Like I feel like you get tired of it after like a week or two. But like. For a yeah, little when bit you're in quarantine, you, guys, you might you want to spice it up at least a little bit, right? Because like I remember at the beginning, my dad was trying to like risk game night. And I'm like, I really just kind of want to be in my room. <laughs> like I'm not trying to sit. Like I don't want to. Like I'm already kind of tired of you guys. I don't want to sit and play Monopoly with you and be more tired of you mm-hmm. guys. Like, but yeah. ah, man, it's it's a no. I I miss. Our family. We used to always eat dinner watching Jeopardy and then Wheel of Fortune right after and mm-hmm. like. I miss that. I do because yep. it was, and you do feel kind of smart when you get a, like you get that one Jeopardy question right per uh, episode. And you feel kind of smart. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I knew that one. <laughs> and it's funny to think about because, like, in my head, I'm like, man, you know, I would have got like five questions right. I'd be okay. And then you realize, well, you have to buzz in before the person and five and questions get it right. Isn't, so isn't you, that much? You know it. You, you yeah, so, five, like the first question, question, you know, two hundred point questions, right? Yeah. It's only a thousand, like thousand bucks. You're not getting it. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> like that's like that's like the price for you know that's the grand you know that's the consolation prize for showing yeah, up basically. Exactly. So I mean, like you know I don't know the final Jeopardy question, so mm-hmm. like you're done. But yeah. Oh man. So, Do yeah. you remember that Jeopardy tournament we had like at Summer Ventures like all those years ago? Yep. Literally. Do you remember that? Literally. Like. The round I was in, I got a couple of questions right, but then I was I was watching like the next the next round of people. I I knew every single question that was asked, right? Literally every single one. But when I was sitting in the chair, I knew a couple, and like my teammates knew a couple. But like overall, we just didn't do well because it just wasn't. And then like all of us knew the rest of the, the rest of the questions. Like after right? the next round, it's so that was, it's it was always fun, so annoying. But, like, it's like why oh, did I get this game? <laughs> It's always like that. It's like, why did I get, like, you know, you'll have the category, like, the thing you, like, studied your whole life, mm-hmm. but someone else's game, you're like... <laughs> the very next round was Greek mythology at peak my Percy Jackson love. Like, I knew... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The, like, everything, I was so... There was one category. It was NBA player nicknames. That was the only category I had. And nobody, because they were all, everyone was nerds. I was the only person. I was like, I think I know that one. Uh, yeah, I know this. One. And I was like, and like everyone thought I was like so. I was like, no, I I don't even like play basketball. I just know I. There was one basketball video game I played growing up, and they just used nicknames, and that's how I knew all the names. I didn't know like mm. I didn't even watch basketball back then. Like, mm. but no, I felt so special. I was like, yes, I'm valuable to my team. Mm-hmm. And then I knew nothing else. Yep. But I got like four questions, and I was like, cool. <sighs> yeah, that was. That, was ah, man, that whole experience was wild. I, how long ago was that? 2014, that was like, six years ago. Are you serious? Was that long? 21? Yo, yeah. that's so weird. I still remember, like. <laughs> <sighs> that was so weird. Dude, we, that is wild. Six years. I mean, we're. Yeah. I was about to say we're only twenty. I'm like we're not twenty. We're, we're twenty-two, 20, right? Oh, no. <laughs> you're twenty-two. Oh no. Yeah, I was twi- are you? You're twenty-two. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Twenty-three next month. Yeah. Okay. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All oh, right. Your birthday's in September. That's right. Mm-hmm. I knew. I knew that, but like I didn't realize it was already August. I. I 
just I literally just <laughs> had that thought of like I'm turning 23 next month. Wow. Like, <laughs> in a month and a half. Well, okay, sure. Wow. Yo, it's so weird because I'm like, no, no, it's still summer. September's not until right next month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, hopefully, right. quarantine will be done by then. Right just like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Be a good birthday. It's gift. like you say it, and like your hair just naturally, like spontaneously turns gray. And say it, just like, oh, I'm so old now. I'm what just, happened? To it's me? my it's my thirtieth birthday. Maybe quarantine will be over by my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be any day now. It's like SpongeBob with like the skeleton yeah. sweeping the floor. Uh, It'll be any day now. Like, oh. <laughs> hmm. That's what I need to. We need to watch SpongeBob. That'll that'll bring it back. I First think three seasons. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you have Amazon Prime at all? Yeah. Is it free on Amazon yeah, Prime? They, yeah. Yeah. It's all on there. Yeah. I think I think the first like five seasons. So every episode you need's on there. Yes. It is. It, it's comfort ah, food. We went it is to so the, good. It's so perfect. Like, like every joke is. Per- and I know like everyone knows this because it's SpongeBob, but like. Every joke is perfect. Mm-hmm. Like it's just too funny. Like it's, <clears throat> I don't even like systematically understand how great it is. Like if for, if somebody haven't problem. seen SpongeBob yet, that's just one other thing you can do during quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, if you haven't seen SpongeBob, stop, exit the video what are you doing? You immediately. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't have Amazon Prime, acquire Amazon Prime. <laughs> Watch SpongeBob, mm. and after you're done laughing, come back. Yes. Like, <laughs> it's getting weird because, like, as we're getting older, less and less people have watched SpongeBob, and like yeah. people, you know, like college students. Like, I there was a college student last semester oh, no. who like hadn't seen SpongeBob, and oh. I was like, I I was like, really? Like, I was genuinely like. I'm a loss for words. I was like, how have you not seen, like, I understand, like, you know, like, you know, they knew who Spongebob was, but, like, from, like, memes and stuff, but not, like, the, I'm like, Spongebob is so, like, like, first of all, Spongebob's, like, half of all the memes out there, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is wild. It's, like, like, it's so, like, it's too iconic, man. But I realized, like, that's going to be the show like, you know how your parents are always talking about, oh, in my day, this was that show. That's our show now. Yeah. That, like, everyone RA, everyone, <laughs> when we're, like, 40, everyone 40 is going to know what we're talking about. No one under 40 is going to know what we're talking about. Which, yeah, not <sighs> necessarily looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, no. No, don't worry. We're, we're not, we're, we're not, we're, like, halfway there. Maybe. Like, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Not going to be 40 anytime soon. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, gosh. 40, so, yeah, hopefully... Old. If you're still watching, hopefully you got some co- good ideas. If you're just, you know, if you've already watched all of your, you know, backlog of shows, played through all the backlog of video games. If you, hopefully we gave you some good ideas of stuff. If you're just looking for something to, to do during the quarantine, because it's not over. It's not going to be over, you know, anytime soon. <laughs> like, I mean, hopefully it'll be over by my birthday, but probably not. <laughs> I, I hate to be that guy, but I, uh... I don't know. I, at this point, I'm kind of like. It's accepted. I'm never. I'm thinking like again. 20, 2020 is done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. Hopefully, even yeah. after this year. Yeah, like if we even do this year, like we're supposed to like. <laughs> if we do have quarantine all the way through yeah. the end of 2020, hopefully we gave you some ideas of just you know things that you can do to pass the time, <laughs> just not you know to help not think about <laughs> the stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> what is life, man? <laughs> Any uh, last-minute miscellaneous things you want to bring up before you sign off? That's all we got from here. Okay. And with that, we'll see you all next time. Take care, guys.